I'm Tom Waters, and holy shnikes, we're doing Tommy Boy. That guy in a little car. Don't. <laughs> What's happening? The quintessential 90s comedy duo, Chris Farley and David Spade, married over-the-top slapstick physical comedy with deadpan dry wit dripping with sarcasm. Hi, I'm Earth. Have we met? Their 1995 cult classic, Tommy Boy, tells the tale of a freshly graduated party seeker, heir to an auto parts tycoon, thrust into leadership after the untimely death of his father. In order to save the company and the town that relies on its survival, Tommy Callahan must take over his father's old sales route and convince people to buy into their newest product line. Now this story hits all the standard 90s comedy tropes, including fat jokes, dumb jokes, bald jokes, Rob Lowe, a random song and dance routine, and lots of bumps to the head. But buried beneath all of the overacting and dodgy plot points are strong lessons in perseverance, finding your unique voice, and developing a winning presentation. Today we're going to have a look at what it means to fake it till you make it. The movie Tommy Boy offers us a first-hand look at the struggles and frustrations of a budding sales rep developing their routine from scratch. The term, fake it till you make it, is tossed around so much in sales that its intended lesson is often forgotten. New hires are trained to strut around pretending to know more than they really do, promising more than they can deliver, and creating a culture of inauthenticity. Every new sales rep has first-time jitters. They feel they don't know enough about the product or company to sell effectively. And most of the time, they're right. But many managers teach fake it till you make it, by encouraging new agents to drum up confidence out of nowhere. As a result, they create sales presentations based around an ideal personality of how they expect a salesperson should appear. Tommy watches his dad pitch using analogy, canned one-liners, and a confident delivery. Fair enough, Doug. Of course, I could get a hell of a good look at a T-bone steak by sticking my head up a bull's ass, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. This leaves a huge impression on him and colors the presentation style he adopts throughout the movie. The problem is, Tommy's dad has spent years building a reputation of quality, reliability, and trustworthiness. He can take liberties with his presentation because he has the authenticity to back it up. Tommy does not. So his fake it till you make it strategy starts off hollow and ineffective. But the movie shows a strong characteristic of Tommy Boy, which is required of any new sales rep bold determination. By persevering through constant rejection, Tommy gains the important experience necessary to refine a quality sales presentation. He recruits his colleague, Richard, to help answer any technical questions about their product while he handles the pitch. Together, they set out to traverse his father's old sales route, and they go through all the classic rookie mistakes. Almost every new sales rep gets hyped after training and feels ready to get it started. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. But that's easier said than done. No. Okie dokie. In reality, mustering up the courage to continue a discussion after you hear your first no is an incredibly difficult first hurdle. But it softens over time. Let me say, maybe. When they get their first maybe, they finally have an opportunity to engage in a real conversation with their client to move forward with the sale. Richard starts off way too technical and immediately loses his prospect's attention. Then it's Tommy's chance to shine. Here's what happens when you blindly follow, fake it till you make it. What my associate is trying to say is that... Uh... He starts off using simpler language, but clearly shows that their presentation is unrehearsed and improvisational. Our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even going to believe it two cardinal sins in the world of sales. Let's say you're driving along the road with your family. Now, storytelling in sales can be a very effective way to convey your value proposition. It gives a prospect a sense of practical application and helps them connect to the utility of your brand. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> but the presentation flies out of control in a classic Farley meltdown. Now let's see what happens when you're driving with the other guy's brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy! Not now, damn it! Truck tire! I can't stop! Help! He just doesn't stop. And your family's screaming, 
Oh my god, we're burning alive! This scene demonstrates some very common issues with new sales rep presentations. First, Tommy lacks situational awareness. He's so caught up with getting his point across, he fails to observe any cues from his prospect or his colleague. Second, he shows that he's terrible at improvisation, <laughs> which makes their lack of rehearsal even worse. But above all, the biggest flaw in this presentation is that it was too focused on the pitch itself and not on developing a connection. We get to see some improvement by the time they reach their next prospect. They reach the point where they're comfortable with their first initial rejection and can continue to keep the conversation moving along. But since their only understanding of effective sales presentations were from watching Tommy's father, they focus too heavily on delivering canned one-liners to win the favor of their prospect. Of course I understand what no means. But if I took no for an answer, I'd probably wind up on a street corner selling spicy hot dogs and wearing a funny hat, right? It makes sense, doesn't it? Bold one-liners delivered charismatically require practice, experience, and the appropriate context. Richard's approach comes off as inauthentic and doesn't serve to build the relationship. I don't like you. Probably never will. You're a smug, unhappy little man, and you treat people like they were idiots. Tommy's father was well-known in the industry and developed years of rapport with his buyers. But we both know a guarantee is only as good as a man who writes it. It was his personal connections that his father had that made him great, not just his witty banter. He brings the conversation to his father's long-standing relationship with the client and leads the conversation to a potential intent to buy. But he gets so caught up at delivering his dad's classic rebuttal. Hey, I tell you what, you can take a good look at a butcher's ass by sticking your head up there, but wouldn't you rather take his word for it? He loses his connection to the buyer. What? By the end of the presentation, he's falling apart and rants about the brutal honesty of his personal situation. My whole life sucks! I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going. My dad just died, I'm out here getting my ass kicked, and every time I drive down the road I want to jerk the wheel into a goddamn bridge impuntment! While this ultimately kills the deal and makes him look psychotic, it's the first glimpse of genuineness we see built into the presentation. Tommy finally has a real breakthrough during an unlikely sales scenario. In sales, you start off in opposition. A sales rep has a desired action. In this case, Tommy wants to order some chicken wings. I'll have chicken wings. Kitchen's closed until dinner. Just got cold stuff and desserts. A buyer needs to be convinced to aid in facilitating the desired action. Whether it's an endorsement, a sale, or firing up a cold fryer, the goal of a sales rep is to bring the buyer over from the opposing side. He initially makes another rookie sales mistake, starting off with a presentation about himself. Boy, some chicken wings would really hit the spot. You sure it's closed? And the response he gets is typical of this strategy. Let me check. Yep, it's closed. Rejection. But then he does something different. He levels with her. He asks her name. Then he builds upon a mutual connection by explaining that they're both in sales so he could address her as a peer. Let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. He delivers a bold monologue in the typical Chris Farley, larger-than-life fashion. Well, then I get all excited. I'm like, Jojo, the idiot circus boy with a pretty new pet. And then I take my naughty pet and I go... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I killed it! I killed my sale! <laughs> that's when I blow it. But that's when people like us have got to forge ahead, Helen. Am I right? God, you're sick. Although it was a bit deranged, it won her attention. Tell you what, I'll go turn the fryers back on and throw some wings in for you. Hey, thanks, Helen. He lets go of trying to be just like his father and develops his own narrative around selling through analogy. He made her feel like a person, just like him, just trying to get through their day. He repositioned his focus from winning her over to making a connection, which ultimately convinced her to fulfill his request. That 180 you just pulled with the waitress. Why can't you sell like that? Richard boils down the success of his presentation to confidence. But that confidence wasn't just because he was having a little fun and had nothing to lose. He'd been on the road for weeks at this point, persevering through rejection after rejection, pitching time and again until his initial aha moment. Now this is a movie, 
So I don't expect any of you to make a scene at a restaurant in the hopes to convince a waitress to supply you with an off-menu item. But in spite of the predictable results during these scenes, there are clear lessons in the psychology, theory, and practical application of the behavior of these characters. Fake it till you make it is designed to guide your behavior, not dictate it. Here are the rules for successfully incorporating the fake it till you make it strategy. Learn the difference between framework and delivery. Follow the framework, but develop your own delivery. Confidence does not come from thin air. Start with the confidence in your ability to grow and learn. Trust in the vision of your company's leaders. But you won't be able to do any of that without trying in the first place. Look deeper into successful sales tactics. What works for others may not work for you. It's important to examine why something works in order to make it your own. The final sales scene of the movie shows us the characters have progressed to the point where they're finally getting committed interest but have to overcome unique objections to the sale. The prospect's hesitation to buy is marginal but valid. He wants a guarantee. The pair actually respond with appropriate rebuttals. But the prospect's concern runs deeper than simply offering a guarantee. He wants that feature to be showcased to their customers. His concern for presentation over authenticity parallels the lessons we learned throughout the movie. Luckily, our heroes catch themselves from following the same dead-end perspective. Tommy applies a classic sales rebuttal technique by helping his prospect examine the root of the objection. He makes a connection with the buyer by showing that he appreciates their perspective. Here's the way I see it, Ted. Guy puts a fancy guarantee in a box because he wants you to feel all warm and toasty inside. Yeah, makes a man feel good. Of course it does. Why shouldn't it? You figure you put that little box under your pillow at night, the guarantee fairy might come by and leave a quarter. Am I right, Ted? <laughs> Despite going off the rails for a bit, he provides valid reasoning behind the perceived value of a guarantee versus the actual value of a quality product. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I got spare time. But for now, for your customer's sake, for your daughter's sake, you might want to think about buying a quality product from me. He makes a lot of sense, and it wins him the business. Okay, I'll buy from you. Oh, that's... What? Cue the 90s winning it life montage. Yes, I'll buy. Yes, I like what I hear. Yes, sounds good. Fake it till you make it can be effective but it has to be thought of in the right context. Selling requires you to develop your own unique style toward making a connection with your audience. Whether you're a technical expert, have a larger than life personality, or you're somewhere in between, you won't know how to find the right voice without getting out there and trying, even if it takes a bit of rejection and a few bumps along the way. Oh, son of a, that's gonna leave a mark. Wanna learn more about sales theory and pop culture? Be sure to like and subscribe to get notified of our next segment. 